All right, Kung Fu Chronicles, we are off to see another master for another five questions. Let's roll. Kung Fu Chronicles, today we are in the city of Ventura, California to visit Master Manny Rodriguez who teaches the unique style of chuka or southern praying mantis kung fu. Except no substitutes. So remember, subscribe if you haven't already so we can keep you up to date on all the new video and content that we post. And while you're at it, follow us on our social media right here so you can also be privy to up and coming content and new things that we're doing for the channel. And also stick around to the end of the video so that you can see some special self-defense techniques from the southern mantis system that Sifu Manny and his son will show us. All right, let's go check them out. Master Manny Rodriguez, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, and thank you for the honor and the pleasure. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, so I wanted to get started for people that don't know about you. A lot of people do already, but your kung fu history, how you got started, a little brief kind of synopsis on that, your motivation starting martial arts and kung fu. Well, you know, starting martial arts, I have to give credit to my mother. Okay. There was a program in New York City, and being a fellow New Yorker, you probably remember Summer in the City. Sir, yes sir. Yeah, that's right. So all the churches and different organizations would provide things for the kids. And when I was very young, this is in the 60s, um, there were a bunch of young guys, and um, my mother sent me off with them, and it ended up at Jerome Mackey's Judo School. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow, nice, nice. <laughs> Back in the old days when it was really strict, you know, and then... I had some classes at Jerome Mackey's and then my uncle, who was a combat instructor for the army during the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. also was a judo man and gave me his original judo uniform. Wow. Nice. So that went on for some time and then I went to St. Francis de Sales uh, uh, Catholic School and in there was a friend of mine, uh, Willie, and Willie was doing Taekwondo. And he said, oh, you got to do Taekwondo. And I, and I said, but I do Judo. And he says, no, you'll like Taekwondo better. And it was another uh, in the neighborhood in Spanish Harlem program for young kids. So okay. I went there and that's when I ended up started learning Taekwondo from Sonny Mahai, Joe Hayes. And it was a, a satellite school for Richard Chun. The headquarters was in Manhattan. And um, that's how my martial art career began to like really blossom and started buying books. And then of course, right in that time period came Five Fingers of Death. Nice, yep. Shaw Brothers. And yep. Shaw Brothers, right? And, and uh, we're in the car, my father's driving that old Ford Falcon. And then over the radio was, come see the princess singing, the, the Mongolian warrior. Oh, it was okay. on the radio, the advertisement. And that was my first time I saw Kung Fu. At that time I was already doing Judo and Taekwondo, right. but I fell in love with Kung Fu and I have to accredit the Shaw Brothers for that. Shaw Brothers movies, man, uh, yep. And there was a, a movie theater that started showing all those Kung Fu movies in, in uh, you know, in East Harlem. And it was called the Eagle Theater on 3rd Avenue. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> Nice. And, and you know everybody's screaming at the screen, you know, kick his butt, blah blah blah. And you had you know Angela Mao and all that. Yeah, yeah. And course. I had the dream to learn kung fu. That was the seed of it. And nice. eventually, 
it came through a very strange way. I did Taekwondo all the way to black belt. I coached in very high level areas. Um, I, uh, I was one of the coaches at the first U.S. Open at the Olympic Training Center in oh, Colorado wow. Springs. Um, really nice. I had a couple of my students place in the Goodwill Games in okay. Barcelona, Spain. Uh, I had two students place. I actually took a silver medal and a bronze medal in the Goodwill Games. Oh, very nice. And, um, well, to cut to, cut to the chase, um, my father worked for the airlines and uh, he, was, he did work on Air Force One and stuff like that. Oh. And Pan Am had the license for that. He's former Air Force. Got it, yeah. And then the central hub switched to Chicago, to Chicago O'Hare. So the whole family was transported to the Chicago area oh, and ended up in the suburbs because okay. it was closer to Chicago O'Hare, the airport. And um, I, I was I was suffering, you know. The, the food was very bland, and it was like it was like different. Uh, yeah, it's very different. different. It was devoid of culture, you know, because I was out <laughs> in the suburbs, you know. Right, right, right. And there was this one takeout Chinese restaurant called Ho Luck. Ho meaning good, and luck in English meaning good luck restaurant. Right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, and yeah. there was this old guy cooking. His, his uh, we, he, he liked to be called Uncle Jack, who ended up being my first Kung Fu teacher. He taught me white eyebrow and butterfly hand. What you looking for? I am looking for the master. Ain't no masters here, dude. Ain't no slaves either. <laughs> As time went on, his business grew. And he, he acquired more restaurants and from a takeout, went to a sit down, and he said, I don't have time to teach you the, as much as I used to teach you. So I found a teacher. So it's summertime, and, and Uncle Jack tells her, I said, No, I have found a teacher for yourself, but I don't want to go and learn from anybody else. I just want you. Right. And then there was this guy, he was sitting on a chair, smoking a cigarette outside the restaurant. He had a Dago tee on, Bermuda shorts. And some chancletas, uh, that, like slippers. Yep. Just, yeah. Right? And he's smoking a cigarette and he's all twisted in a knot. I said, I don't want to learn from him. And he looked at me with a mean face. I said, he looks like a Puerto Rican junkie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He look, I mean, <laughs> Let in. Inhale and on that cigarette real strong. Right, right. And he said, no talk like that. Disrespectful, Uncle Jack. Right, 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 said right. That. He said, you learn from him. He's a very good master. He knows what he's doing. So, you know, he asked me to hit him. What? I want you to hit me as hard as you can. I figured, all right, I, I'm almost a black belt in Taekwondo. I've done karate. I've done judo. I'm going to hit knock him. Guy I'm going to knock him really oh, hard, and then I can stay with the old man. <laughs> My fist bounced off him. He thought that that would make me want to learn from him. That made me want to run to the old man more. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to run him. He scared me, so I want to go. Okay. Eventually, I started learning from him, and that was Sammy Wong. Oh, wow. Okay, nice. And that became, and he, he was the Chuka teacher. Right. I was gonna ask how did the uh, Southern Mantis come there was out? A, that was the Southern Mantis. That's the Got Southern Mantis story. It's a little theatrical, but I can I promise you everything I'm telling you is true. Okay, nice. And so I have a background in Taekwondo, Karate, and uh, Judo. But as time went on, I started to stick to the Kung Fu. It was so deep, and it was uh, there was so many parts to it that I really started to love, and it rekindled that love when I was a, a kid at the Eagle Theater in Manhattan. Right. Watching all the Kung Fu movies. Yeah, I want to do Kung Fu. I want to do Kung Fu. The yeah. outfits, the lion of dance. Of course, there's something about it. Right? Yeah, there's something about it. What made you decide to wanting to become the instructor, or you know, like saying, okay, this this is what I really want to do, and train people. Well, when I started doing Kung Fu, when I first was dropped in the cornfields of the Midwest. <laughs> what was that? In a town called Hoffman Estates, Illinois, literally was, didn't have, they had one like kind of uh, Olympic karate studios from way back then, you know. And um, they, there was no Kung Fu, there was no Taekwondo. So Sonny Mahai said, you know, you can start a branch school. And I was only a green belt. I started teaching Taekwondo okay. at the high school for a, a Asian club, Conant High School in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. And um, I started teaching way back then. And then so it was like a natural progression. And so as I started doing the martial arts, 
uh, Sifu Wong noticed, he said, uh, you want to show Kung Fu too, you know, because you teach the other stuff. And I said, can I? And he gave me permission to do it. It probably helped with all that background with, with other arts too, to incorporate when, yes. you, when you taught. Yes, it when did. When you taught your Kung Fu to, to students. Yeah, and I was, I was a competitor, you know, coming from the East Coast, like I, I trained with Joe Hayes and Sonny Mahai and that crew. And there was no such thing as going to a tournament and doing one event. Right. Because right. if you were studied with Joe Hayes, you had to do forms, you had to do fighting, you had to do whatever was on that list, you had to do it all. And that was how they ran. I mean, that was the way it was. There was none of this pick and choose stuff. And, um, and you represented the school that you were, were from. You know, so I took that and, and I make the students when I went to the Midwest and I started teaching, that was our policy. Got it. And I would take I would take my guys from the northwest suburbs and we would go to 3508 South Halstead and they would go into the inner city and now you guys are going to fight. You know, like because I knew your yeah, city. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. Like, those, like, those, yeah, those are the old days. The old days, it was a tournament in a loft. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever right. wherever it was, or Central Park right. was another right. place we would, you know, meet from time to time. Okay. And I brought that culture with me to Chicago. Are we going to talk or are we going to fight? So let me fast forward a bit. Uh, we both know, obviously, your friend Sifu Kisu, really good guy, this is North, uh, Shaolin. You guys were both obviously involved in the Avatar project for people that love Avatar, and I know it's a big deal. Um, when you got involved with that, did you were you even like a cartoon fan, or were you just like... No, okay. no, I had, I, I not like my son, uh, or a lot of younger people, mm -hmm. you know, they watch all this animation and stuff, and Kisu was a big fan of the stuff. Yeah, he loved but, it. Uh, but I, I never was. I was a classical musician and I was into like film noir and that kind of stuff. So I was approached by Kisu because they were looking for an, an unusual style for this character, obviously Toph, because I worked on Toph, right? Right. And he thought, he, it was Kisu's idea that he thought that this system would be perfect for that character because he has a good eye for that kind of stuff. Yeah. He, he, he can see where it would fit. And he said, would you be interested? And I said, um, what does it involve? I've never done anything. I never did anything in Hollywood. I never did any, you know, that kind of stuff. So I went to where Brian and, and Mike were. They were in a house, someplace, I think, up in Hollywood or Bel Air or something like that, with cables laying everywhere. Right, right, right yeah. That's and, they, and they showed me these drawings, and they, and they showed me that this is the character we're interested in. Would you like to do this? And I said, uh, I guess so. <laughs> I didn't yeah, even know sure. what I was getting into. I get it. But as like long as it had Kung Fu, right, yeah. right, okay. Yeah, Different. so yeah, so I thought, well, this is a new a new adventure right, for right. me and and I trusted Kisu and I figured oh, okay, I can follow I'll follow my leader for so if it wasn't for Kisu I wouldn't be in it in yeah. the uh, Avatar situation. He's the one that saw what was needed for the character and he felt that this style was perfect for it. Yeah. One thing I'd like to say is like while I was working on Avatar, besides the uh, introductory where we were on the, uh, on the lot of Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. um, where I saw the first three episodes, after that I didn't watch a single episode until it was done because oh, really? I didn't want it to influence how I was thinking how to do things because I'd be handed the script and then you know Brian would tell me like you know hey how do you visualize this happening how do you see the style being used and I didn't want to be influenced by what I saw on the screen and it was working well so like like I say if the wheel isn't broken don't fix, don't it, fix right? it right 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 so I kept doing that so I didn't see the series really until it was over okay that's fair um, now I know it's different times and we're doing different kinds of teaching and everything so stuff on zoom but if people want to train with you guys um, what's a good way to reach out they, they contact us on uh, Facebook or on the internet we have a website and you can find us on that and we do our classes virtually and as soon as this uh, pandemic uh, comes to a conclusion that we'll get to start training again hands-on. Great. Um, so uh, my segment's called Five Crucial Questions for Kung Fu Masters. I would love to ask you those questions if that's okay, sir. Certainly. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Well, uh, Wing Chun looks similar to Southern Praying Menace. But indeed, if you look at White Eyebrow and uh, Black Dragon, all the Hakka styles, and, uh, and Wing Chun, they all share a common an ancestry. Uh, the unique thing about Southern Praying Manus is that it came from the north. 
So it has more in common when you look at it and analyze it closely and look at Northern Shaolin and Northern styles, you'll notice that we use kind of the same kind of movements like in Xing Yi to gather power. It, it came to the further south from the empire when it was uh, conquered by the Manchurians in uh, 1644. And that's how it ended up coming to the south. But indeed, it, it has a lot of similarities because we rely on stickiness and close range fighting. So that's where the similarities are. Forms practice is very essential. Oftentimes people make the mistake of forms practice is sparring. And it has nothing to do with that. What form practice does is incult, inculcates the system's way of force production or ging or fudging, some people say. When you do the form and you're going through steps, you're actually working on how to release the force so that it becomes subconscious. And it's, you of course have a sense of enemy when you're doing forms, kyun or kata as they say in Japanese. Um, but the real meaning of what you're doing is to make the perfect movement, not the external movement like ballet, which is to please someone watching, but to feel the connection for the release of the force so that you don't think about it when you're in actual combat. It just releases naturally itself. Well, you know, I said I was a fan of uh, Kung Fu movies. And so what happened was um, his mother and himself were homeless on the streets and his mother was in dire straits. And my son, who is legally adopted, um, <clears throat> was brought to me by his mother. She knew that he wanted to be a martial artist. He was quite young, he was in his teens. And um, she asked me and begged me to take him, to take care of him because she could not provide for her son. Which th threw me back for a minute because I come from a Latin background and I'm used to mothers going, you know, please help me and my child. But he was, he was a teenager, not a baby baby. And it took me about, oh, I'd say about 15 minutes. Am I right, Josh? Mm -hmm. About 15 minutes and I said yes. My personal and honest belief is that MMA is a really good sport and so, so can Kung Fu be, but we're not talking about sport here. We're talking about effectiveness in the street or in combat. That, that's a completely different situation. Kung Fu or like Okinawan, real Okinawan karate or military arts are used for self-defense. So now, you're not gonna be boxing each other. What comes at you in a real self-defense situation is 100% full force. When, so, when you do real self-defense things, like Filipino martial arts know this quite well, when someone comes to cut you with a knife, they're not boxing, they're really trying to cut you. Or anybody who's uh, fought inside a, a prison, you know, when they make a shank and they're gonna shank you. Um, Real Kung Fu addresses those situations when someone comes at you, at you with 100% intensity and intent. And that's very different than sparring. Sparring is all good. You know, you're going back and forth and all that. Now, if you, you, know, you have your MMA fighter, I'm not saying that they, don't, they can't fight. Yeah, sure, they can have a fight. But in a life-death situation, the training is quite different. Like when you train in special forces or the Marines and that kind of stuff and you're, and you're going into combat, it's that kind of training that'll make you survive. And whereas when you're in the ring, you're calculating how this guy's gonna move, you have time for that. And that's all good. You know, it, it, like I'm saying, I'm not cutting it down. Yeah. But when it comes to mortal combat, if you have the real training in any of the Asian martial arts or you've been trained in special forces, that's completely, that's apples and pears. It's two different situations. You can have someone that has very little martial arts skill who can take down, I don't care what level martial artist you are and what style you are because of their intent if you're not trained on how to deal with it. And growing up in East Harlem in New York City, where people, we always used to say, oh, good Kung Fu, they used a garbage can lid, right? 
that's what was there and they <laughs> smashed it in your face. I don't care what style you learn. And boxing works out real good. There's a big difference between street boxing and boxing in the ring. So competition is good, it's good sport, but sparring isn't Mortal Kombat. How I came up with the movements is I'm using the style that I majored in, which is Southern Pachuca, Southern Praying Mantis. And I was handed a script and Brian would say, how do you see this scene with your martial art? And then uh, sometimes I'd go home with the script and sometimes it would happen right then and there. And I'd say, well, well, in the system we move like this and how can we do it in a non-violent way? It was, you had, I had to really rack my brain because the, the, the beauty of it was that if you, if you watch, there's very little contact in, in, in Avatar. And that was the great thing about it because there wasn't any violence like that, like person to person in the cartoon right. at all. So I had to come up with ways where the system, Southern Praying Mantis, could be expressed openly without actually showing uh, injurious uh, technique on, on a character. So this really, this was a new thing for me. This really got me into my head, like how do, how do I use this system like this? Mm -hmm. And that's how that came about. I've experienced sometimes in life, you know, with my last name, Rodriguez, they look at me and you know, my skin's pretty light, you know, they, they don't realize that I'm Cuban. And as soon as they find out that you're Cuban, then sometimes you get a little... A political prisoner from Cuba. And I want my fucking human right now. You feel a little awkward, but I always rise above that. You're gonna appreciate me from, not because of the color of my skin or who I come from or I speak Spanish, because quite frankly, I speak Spanish and I speak some Italian. And um, you're gonna appreciate me for who I am, what I do and how I do my art. Not who, what my skin looks like or what language I speak or how tall I am, how fat I am and all that kinds of stuff. You have to be strong. If we're learning martial art, you have to have modek, martial spirit inside yourself. Don't take any kind of insult and then take it to your heart. Rise above it. We are all children of God. And I, as a religious person, remember Christ on that cross, he came from the Middle East. He wasn't white, he wasn't brown, he wasn't black, he was from the middle. I think God did that on purpose personally in my own theology, in my own mind. And I don't care if you're gay, straight, white, black, pink or purple polka dots or land from Mars. You do the art, you do what you're supposed to do, you be an honest, courageous, hardworking individual and you will gain respect. All right, there you go. Another five questions answered from yet another Kung Fu master. Drop your comments and suggestions below as usual if you want any specific questions answered and let us know who you'd like to see in future videos. Okay, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share, share, share. That's how the word gets out and we can make more of these videos. And thanks again to Sifu Manny and his son for being a part of this video. Yeah, he'll attack. I'm over here on this side. And then you see us chop step all the time. That's the chop step. Nice. So the chop step is always doing this way. Yep, this way. Boom. And then if he kicks squarely, the top step takes this way, see? Yes. And that puts me here. And again, I have the form on. If he swings at me at this point, I have this here. Now I have Kamla on this, on this area. Yep. And then it's easy to snap. Right, break the arm. This way. So you can see why you use the, the right. elements that way. Use the rings. Right. And then another, if he comes in, you know, a lot of times I catch here, I use a top choice to hit spleen 21. There we go. Over here, and he can't see it because nope. his arm's blocked. So this is a Mo Ying Sao, no shadow hand, because he can't see the attack. And then this fires up. Thank you for watching Kung Fu Chronicles. And check out a few other videos that you may like while you're here. As usual, guys, stay safe. See you guys in the next round, and keep punching.